Well, we've been giving thanks to the Lord for, for His faithfulness to us as a church. We have thanked Him for His faithfulness to us as families, for His faithfulness to Himself, that He was faithful to His name and His character and His word. And uh, maybe I can just remind us again of how much we have to give thanks to the Lord for His faithfulness because He is faithful to His people. He, those who, uh, whom He came to save, He will keep uh, till the end. 1 Corinthians uh, 1 verse 8 and 9 tells us that, that God is faithful and He is the one who has called us into fellowship with His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And, and therefore, He will pre preserve us and He will confirm us blameless on the day of the Lord, that the Lord is faithful and will protect us when we face temptations. And 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says, No temptation has overtaken you by, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with temptation will provide the way of escape also, so that you will be able to endure it. And when we do fall into sin, the Lord is faithful to forgive us when we come and repent and confess our sins. If we confess our sins, 1 John 1, 9 says, He is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He is faithful to sanctify us. 1 Timothy 5, verse 23 reads, Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be preserved complete without blame at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he who calls you, who also will do it. Uh, he is faithful to strengthen and protect us against the evil one. 2 Timothy, uh, sorry, 2 Thessalonians verse 3, uh, chapter 3, verse 3 says, But the Lord is faithful, who will strengthen and guard you from the evil one. And he is faithful even when we are not. If we are faithless, he remains faithful for he cannot deny himself. Therefore, we can wholeheartedly echo the words of the psalmist in Psalm 92 who says, It is good to give thanks to Yahweh and to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to declare your loving kindness in the morning and your faithfulness by night. God is faithful, and uh, really, He also demands His people to be faithful as He is faithful. And Exodus, uh, the first the commandment is, you shall have no other God before me. He calls us to be faithful to Him. And Psalm 37, verse 3 says, trust in Yahweh and do good. Dwell in the land and cultivate faithfulness. And as Christians, we are called to be conformed into the image or the character of Christ. And faithfulness really is a fruit of the Spirit. It is produced by the Spirit in those who have the Spirit indwell them and who walk by the Spirit. And so this morning, I want us to look at what it means to be faithful. Uh, what identifies someone as being faithful? What are the characteristics of one who is faithful? So that we would be faithful because I can't think of a better response in giving thanks to the Lord for His faithfulness to us than to offer up to Him our faithfulness. Uh, so what does it mean to be faithful? Uh, you would think that to be full of faith and faithful would be the same thing, but they are not. They are related, but they are not the same thing. For to be full of faith really um, are not necessarily the faithful, but faithfulness is a result of being full of faith. To be full of faith is to have faith. To be faithful is to keep the faith. To be faithful is to be true to the trust that is placed in us by God and others. God and others can trust us because we are faithful. And so the Merriam-Webster Dictionary defines faithful as being true to the facts, 
That is, to be honest, uh, to, be, uh, to have a firm adherence to promises or an observance to duty, that is to be dependable. It's being steadfast in affection or allegiance to another person. That is to be loyal. And I want to look us to look at these three elements, honesty, dependability, and loyalty. That would constitute what it means to be faithful. Now, now, the fruit of faithfulness does not come natural to us as fallen men, fallen people, uh, even despite our insistence that we are faithful. Uh, Proverbs 20 verse 6 says, Many a man proclaim his own loyalty, but who can find a trustworthy man? And so Solomon basically was saying, Many claim to be faithful, but few are found to be faithful. Uh, That is because to be faithful is hard. To be faithful comes at a cost, and very few people are willing to pay that cost. The faithful person, therefore, is someone who is honest and ethical in his affairs, in word and deed. A faithful person is someone who is dependable or reliable or trustworthy. A faithful person is someone who is loyal in his relationships and to his convictions. And so today I want, as I said, want to unpack these three elements of faithfulness to, better, uh, to help us better grasp what it means to be faithful, what it is to be faithful, to identify perhaps areas in our own lives where we need to grow in so that we are more faithful, and to practice these things, these elements of honesty, dependability, and loyalty uh, as a gift, an offering, a thanksgiving offering to the Lord for His faithfulness to us. Well, before we begin, let me just pray for us. Father, we ask, Lord, that that you would help us this morning, that that your word to us would be clear. Um, Lord, that the desire of our hearts is to be faithful as a thanksgiving offering for your faithfulness to us. And so, Lord, help us as we listen to these words. Lord, give us ears to hear. Give us heart to believe and give us wills to be changed, to conform more into your likeness, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And so we ought to be faithful by being honest. That is, honest in word and honest in deed. So first of all, honest in word. Honesty really is very highly valued by God because He is a God of truth. Uh, The ninth commandment uh, says that you shall bear no false witness against your neighbor. Uh, And really, this uh, refrain is repeated throughout the Bible. The need for honesty, the need for speaking truth, the, 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 the prohibition against lying and deceit. Why? Because God is a God of truth. His word is truth. Uh, he, he cannot lie. It is impossible for him to lie. Uh, his son is the truth, the way, the truth, and the life. And the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. And so as children of God, we ought to be people of truth. Uh, once we were children of the devil, who was a murderer from the beginning and who does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. Whenever he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own nature, for he is a liar and the father of lies. And as Christians, we must not be associated or characterized by lies, by deception, because Jesus is the truth and Jesus speaks truth. It says John 8, verse 45. And so we who have become to believe in Jesus now must be people of truth, speaking the truth in love, as Ephesians 4, 15 tells us. Paul later on in that same letter, that same chapter actually, exhorted the Ephesian church to lay off the deeds of the old man and to put on the deeds of the new man that was created in Christ Jesus. And the first thing he told them to put off was lying, was falsehood. 
And the first thing that they needed to put on was truth, speak truth. Ephesians 4.25 says, Therefore, laying aside falsehood, speak truth, each one with his neighbor. Why? For we are members one of another. And speaking lies break those relationships. Speaking lies undermines those, those relationships. It breaks trust. And it is not an exaggeration to say that God hates lies. He abhors it. He despises it. He finds it repulsive. And we see that in, in Proverbs 6, verse 16, that reads, There are six things which Yahweh hates, even seven which are an abomination to him, which are repulsive to him. Haughty eyes, pride, the second thing, lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked thoughts, feet that hastens to run to evil, a false witness who breathes out lies, and one who spreads strife among brothers. And twice this honesty uh, is listed uh, in this list of detestable things, and that is lying and bearing false witness. Now, <laughs> I would be surprised if anyone here would not describe himself today as being honest. I think we all like to think of ourselves as being honest. But so often, we slip up in our words. Our, our, our tongue seems to be a, a rogue member in our bodies with a mind of its own. Um, that's what James says in James chapter 3. But no one can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil, full of deadly poison. With it we bless our Lord and Father, and with it we curse men who have been made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth comes blessing and cursing. My brothers, these things ought not to be so. And so it, it, it's so easy, it happens so quickly that before you know it, you said something that you shouldn't have, or you misrepresent something, or you exaggerate something, or you leave something out that would just slant the, the reality a little bit, or perhaps even tell a little white lie. That does not harm anyone, we tell ourselves. But even innocent white lies as a way of bruising the fruit of faithfulness. And I've read uh, this week of a pastor who on Christmas Eve was on his way to, to church. And he just, as, just before they left, there was a, a knock on the door and he opened it up. And there's this sweet little girl from the next door, uh, neighbor, and uh, with a plate of cookies. Uh, offering it to them. This is, my mom made these cookies for you for, for Christmas. And he, oh, thank you very much. And he took the cookies and put it on the kitchen bench. And off they went to church, completely forgetting about the cookies. The next day, while he was in the front yard, the little girl ran up to him and said, did you like the cookies my mom made you? And he, without blinking an eye, said, yes, thank you very much. They were very nice. What would you have done? What would you have done? He was convicted by the Lord because he just lied to that little girl. He was not honest in his words to her. And he tried to rationalize it by saying, well, it doesn't matter. She will never know. And, and it will save her some hurt. And of course, me, some embarrassment. But probably more me from embarrassment than the little girl. And he realized that pride was the reason why he lied to her. Instead of saying to her, oh, listen, I am so sorry. I haven't had a chance to have some of those cookies, but let's, let's, let me bring it out and let's have one together. Let's eat together. He lied to her. He was unfaithful to his words, unfaithful to his Lord, uh, who hates lies. What would you have done in that situation? 
Well, you, I'm sure you can think of other similar situations. Uh, a friend comes to you and say, oh, would you please pray for me for this or for that? And you go, absolutely, definitely, love to. And a few days later, after you have completely forgot and failed to pray, the person comes to you and says, oh, thank you so much. The Lord wonderfully answered our prayers. What do you do? Mm -hmm. Great. Anytime. I'm glad the Lord answered our prayers. Or I'm so thankful that the Lord is faithful even when I am not. I'm so sorry. I completely forgot to pray for you. The Lord requires us to be faithful in our words. Always. Because there's nothing as destructive to our character and to our relationships than lying, than dishonesty. Why? Because one lie normally spurns a lot of other lies to cover that one. Or spawns, rather. Uh, and it destroys trust. Because if they find out that you've lied to them, now next time when you say something, I'm not sure I can believe that or trust that. And so to be faithful is to be honest, honest in our words and honest in our deeds. Again, the Bible is just replete with instructions for us to deal honestly with each other. Leviticus 19, 11 says, You shall not steal, nor deal falsely, nor lie to one another. Proverbs 11, verse 1 says, A deceptive balance is an abomination to Yahweh, but a just weight is his delight. He's, of course, speaking in those days in the marketplace where you would buy things and they would weigh things. And so if you have a, a weights that are untrue, that has been doctored a little bit, so that you get less for what you pay for, uh, that is an abomination to the Lord. And so to be faithful, we need to be honest in all of our dealings, all of our affairs. We should be above reproach. No one inside or outside of the church should be able to bring an accusation against us of dishonesty, of shady practices, of dubious dealings. So we need to be honest at work. During our work hours, make sure you work. Do not take what is not given to you. And the temptation, to be honest, is always there. I mean, I'm just, just trying to think of, of examples, but, I, but one that came to mind is, is, I wonder for a Christian second-hand car salesman, how much would he disclose about the condition of the car he's selling? Or what about keeping accurate timesheets or honest invoicing for jobs? But it's not only at, at work, it is everywhere. Have you ever been given more change than what you should receive at the checkout count? What do you do? Alert the cashier and say, sorry, sorry, you gave much, me too much change, here's, here's, the, here's it back. Or do you pocket it and make a quick getaway, <laughs> rationalizing it by saying, well, they charge too much anyway. To be faithful blesses the Lord, but it often comes at a cost. We are to be honest in our deeds, and the Lord prospers that. I'm thinking of Joseph, who was faithful to his employer or his master, Potiphar, and did not deal dishonestly with him or with his unfaithful wife. Uh, personally, uh, Potiphar, I think, knew that his wife was the problem because he cast Joseph in prison. Normally, he would have had his head removed. What about Daniel? Daniel is an excellent example of faithfulness. He was impeccably honest in all that he did. We read in Daniel 6 
Verse 3 and 4, Then this Daniel began distinguishing himself among the commissioners and satraps because an extraordinary spirit was in him. And the king planned to set him over the entire kingdom. Then the commissioners and the satraps began seeking to find a ground of accusation against Daniel in regard to matters of the kingdom. But they were not able to find any ground for accusation or evidence for or of corruption inasmuch as he was faithful and no negligence or corruption was to be found in him when jealousy drove these men to seek an accusation against daniel in regards to the affairs of the kingdom and they failed there was none to be found and so they uh, dealt dishonestly, deceitfully by persuading King Darius to issue this bogus decree that people should only uh, worship him. And I'm sure Darius never intended that to be uh, applied to a righteous man like Daniel. But Daniel was faithful to his Lord, and he did what he always did, which was to pray three times a day to the Lord, and he was caught. And he was cast into the lion's den, uh, and the Lord graciously delivered him. But even if he did not survive, he would have been pleasing to the Lord because he was faithful in all his dealings. I mean, likewise, Jesus actually challenged his accusers. He says, which one of you convicts me of sin? Who can say anything wrong about me? Can you do it? Can I do it? You may have seen the movie Courageous. Um, in it, uh, uh, an immigrant named uh, Javier Martinez was, was uh, struggling to, to provide for his family. So, and uh, after he lost his job from a construction company because they went over budget and he was walking around uh, looking for work, and then some by some providential in, in, interfere, of intervention, the, the Lord uh, ultimately brought him to another job uh, at, at, a, at a company. And he was doing well. He was working. He was faithful. He's a Christian man. And soon his bosses called him in to offer him a higher position with greater responsibility and greater pay. And But they asked him that, in order for him to do that, he should be willing to falsify some of the inventory documents. And uh, they gave him a day to think about it. And here, Javier was torn between providing for his family. They had no other income. And and this wonderful offer of uh, greater work, more pay, ultimately, he decided... That was dishonest, and he was not going to do that. And he told his employers that, fully expected to be laid off. But his bosses told him that really that was only a test of his integrity, and that he passed with flying colors. And he was the first one of many who passed, who refused to be dishonest. And of course, he got the position and, and everything was wonderful for him. But uh, uh, to be faithful for us is one has to be honest, honest in our words and in our deeds. And Luke 16.10 tells us, he who is faithful in very little is faithful also in much. But he who is unrighteous in very little is unrighteous also in much. And, and we as, as Christians are called to be salt and light for the Lord in this world, in our society. But if we are not honest people, if we are not honest in our word and in our deeds, then we have essentially lost our saltiness. We have lost our ability to influence people because they would not trust the word that comes out of our mouth. And so to be honest, well, to be faithful is to be Honest. And so we need to give thanks to the Lord by being faithful, being honest in word and deed. 
but also to be faithful by being dependent. Proverbs 26, I read it before, many a man proclaims his own loyalty, but who can find a trustworthy man? Many claim to be faithful, but few are found to be faithful. And this was true in the days of Solomon, and I believe it's doubly, if not more true, in our day today. People often do not keep their word. They do not hold to their commitments. They are often indifferent to the impact that their faithfulness has on others. Again, we can turn to Daniel he was faithful, he was reliable, he was dependable. People could count on him because he kept his word, he kept his, his commitments. Many claim to be faithful, but few are found to be faithful. Why? Because it is hard. It costs to be reliable, to be faithful. And people are not willing to pay the price. And the Lord values those with integrity, those whose word is trustworthy, those who are dependable, those who are faithful to their commitments. If you like, you can turn to Psalm 15, or maybe I think I have it up, up, uh, up here. Psalm 15, which essentially is, gives us a list uh, of standards that a person should keep in order to enjoy fellowship with the Lord. It is essentially a description of someone who is faithful in character. Psalm 15 verse 1 reads, O Yahweh, who may sojourn in your tent and who may dwell on your holy mountain? That is, who may have fellowship with you, O Lord? Then he gives the answer. He who walks blamelessly and works righteousness. He who is honest indeed and speaks truth in his heart. He does not slander with his tongue, nor does evil to his neighbor. He is honest in word, nor takes up a reproach against his friend. He is a loyal friend, and whose eyes a reprobate is despised, but who honors those who fear Yahweh. He is loyal to God, who swears to his own hurt and does not change. He is dependable. And he does not put out his money at interest, nor takes a bribe against the innocent. Again, he is honest. He who does these things will never be shaken. But I want to draw your, our attention to verse 4. He swears to his own hurt and does not change. The Lord wants us to keep our word, to keep our commitments, even when it hurts. Perhaps especially when it hurts, when it is inconvenient, when it is difficult to do so, hard to do so, costly to follow through. God wants us to be faithful, especially when it is hard and costly. Because that is what distinguishes the Christian's dependability from that, with, that we find in the world. Many today make promises of convenience rather than promises of commitment. I will keep my commitment while it is convenient and expedient to do so. But if it's hard or difficult or something else or something better comes up, then there is little hesitation to renege on their commitment, their word, with little regard for the consequences of those affected by their broken promise or commitment. Consider a young man who agreed a friend or a neighbor to help them move house. And so they went to rent a van and all is set to go. When unexpectedly, another friend called him, offering him to go with him to the footy game with great tickets all for free, on the same day, at the same time. What will he do? What will you do? Simply cancel helping his neighbor, leaving them to find someone else at short notice? The godly, faithful young man 
the dependable young man would keep his appointment and help his neighbor even when it hurts. Maybe more seriously, uh, consider a businessman who made a serious mistake, maybe failing to quote accurately for a job, and he discovered it after the contract has been signed. And his secular friends tell him, man, just take it to the lawyers. They were bound to find a, a way out of this situation. Uh, you, can, you can just wiggle your way out of that. What should he do? Well, the faithful Christian businessman will honor his contract, even when it hurts. Even when there is a legal way to wiggle out of it. Now, that doesn't mean he can't go and seek terms and, and perhaps negotiate with the other partner or partners or parties, rather, within that to see if he can somehow uh, get a better contract. You can still do that. But regardless, whether they agree to that or not, the Lord wants us to honor our word, to honor our agreements, even when it hurts. And this is true in everyday life, but it is also true in the life of the church. If you have agreed to serve somewhere, agreed or have committed to be involved in a ministry, to say, oh, yeah, I'll be there, offer to do something, then keep your promise. Keep your word, keep your commitment, even when it hurts. Someone anonymous says, being faithful, when being faithful is most difficult, that's when it's most necessary. I think that deserves repeating. When being faithful is most difficult, that's when it's most necessary. The Lord wants uh, our yes to be yes, and our no to be no. And I think one of the most discouraging things to a church body uh, are members who are not faithful in character. Those who are not dependable. Those who you're not sure you can count on. Those who are quick to make a promise and a commitment, but just as quick to break it. To be faithful is to be dependable. And the Lord requires his people, his servants, to be faithful, dependable, trustworthy. 1 Corinthians 4 tells us, Let a man consider us in this manner as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. In this case, moreover, it is required of stewards that one be found faithful, that one be found trustworthy. Faithful in the stewardship, in the administration, in the management, in the handling of the ministry, the mysteries of God. That is the gospel of Jesus. That is the word of God. So you make sure that that is accurate. But it's not only accurate in word. It is also accurate in character. That you would live out the word that you proclaim. That you need to be faithful to that. And 2 Timothy 2.2 2, Paul instructed Timothy to find faithful men to whom he can entrust that which was given to him in word, in deed, in character. And it says, all the things which you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, entrust these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. And how do you find these faithful, dependable men? Well, you look for them, for men who... Who say what they mean and mean what they say. Men who do what they promise. And who are faithful to commit their commitments, especially when it hurts. He who is faithful in a very little thing is faithful also in much. And he who is unrighteous in a very little thing is unrighteous also in much. And God has no larger field for the man who is not faithful where he is. So to be faithful to, for us to offer up 
an offering of thanksgiving to the Lord. We offer our faithfulness. We need to be faithful by being honest. We need to be faithful by being dependable. And thirdly, we need to be faithful by being loyal. A faithful person is not only honest and dependable, but also loyal. I mean, loyalty speaks to faithfulness to a person, to a relationship, to a friendship. And of course, the foremost loyalty that uh, a Christian must have is loyalty to Christ, his relationship to the Lord. And the clearest expression really, or the demand or a command for us to be loyal to the Lord is found in the great commandment. You shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, all of your soul, all of your mind, and all of your strength. And so the loyal person is loyal to the Lord, and therefore will shun all false doctrine and false teaching. They will oppose and resist those who seek to divert the faithfulness from the simplicity and purity of their devotion to Christ. Those who preach they will shun those who preach another Christ. They will shun those who have a different spirit, who have a different gospel, as 2 Corinthians 11 verse 3 and 4 tells us. So the faithful person is loyal to Christ and his word. And it is loyalty to Christ and his word that impacts his loyalty to others, to his friends, to his brothers and sisters in Christ. And it's this side that I want to emphasize this morning. Faithfulness is to be known for our loyalty in our relationships, loyalty to our spouse, to our husband, to our wives. The faithful will be loyal to their commitment, to their vows of marriage that they made to their wife or their husband, but also to God, and who will keep them even when it hurts especially when it hurts, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health. The faithful will be loyal. When being faithful is most difficult, that's when it's most necessary. And we need to be faithful to our family, to our children, to our siblings, to, to our mothers and fathers. They must know that we are there for them, that we will not abandon them in their hour of need. I mean, Ruth was such a loyal person. She was faithful to Naomi. as She did not desert Naomi when, when Naomi's husband died and then her own husband died. And they only had themselves to rely upon each other. And Naomi was faithful. And we read even of what Boaz praised her for her faithfulness. He has heard of her. He says, all that you have done for your mother-in-law after the death of your husband has been fully told to me. And how you forsook your father and your mother and the land of your birth and came to a people that you did not previously know. It cost Ruth to be faithful. And she was faithful, even when there were other options that were available to her. She could have gone back to her father's house. She could have taken another husband, a uh, Moabite husband. But she was loyal to her mother-in-law to help her, even when it hurts. And so we need to be loyal to our friends, our brothers and sisters in Christ. I mean, Solomon gave us a couple of wonderful descriptions of what it means to be loyal as a, as a friend, loyal to a brother and sister in Christ. Uh, a loyal friend or brother and sister in Christ are willing to speak the truth to us, but they're also willing to stick with us when things go wrong. In Proverbs 27, 6, faithful are the words of a friend, but deceitful are the kisses of an enemy. A loyal friend will tell you what you need to hear, not always what you want to hear. One who cares enough to rebuke you, but also one, enough, one who loves you enough who will not forsake you. So it's not blind loyalty where we overlook uh, and dismiss the sins of others, but it's to speak truth in love. 
Proverbs 11, 17, 17 says, A friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. A, a real friend is one who would not forsake you in a time of difficulty, in a time of stress, in a time of need. There is really no such thing as a fair weather friend. Such a person is really serving themselves. If I may be direct, really a, a social leech who will suck out everything out of you and will detach when things go wrong. And we need to be faithful, loyal as faithful by being loyal as a friend, like Jonathan was to David in Samuel, 1 Samuel 20. I mean, he was loyal to David and it almost cost him his life as his father threw a spear at him in him protecting and coming up, standing up for David. And being loyal to David meant that he forfeited the kingdom, the throne, which was due to him according to law. So being faithful is always costly. It's always hard. To be honest, to be dependable, to be loyal comes at a cost. Are we willing to pay the price for being faithful as, as a thanks offering to God because of Christ our Savior? Because He was faithful. He secured our salvation. I mean, His honesty led to us having the indebitable words of the gospel. His dependability paid for the cost of our sin on the cross. His loyalty guaranteed that the work that he begins in us, he will bring to completion until the day of Christ. And so let us be faithful. Let us, by being honest, dependable, and loyal. It will be hard. It will be difficult. It will be costly. But faithfulness is a fruit of the Spirit, which He will produce in us as we walk by the Spirit, as we are controlled by the love of Christ, as we are filled with the Word of Christ, as we set our minds on the thing of above where Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father. He, the Holy Spirit, will strengthen us with spiritual power to make the hard choices, to be faithful, to pay the hefty cost of faithfulness, but also to hear the heavenly commendation from our Lord and Savior, well done, good and faithful servants. You were faithful in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Let me pray for it. Father, we pray, Lord, this morning, and we are conscious, Lord, of your faithfulness to us. And Lord, also that you require of us to be faithful in return, to be people characterized by faithfulness, characterized by honesty, by being dependent, by being loyal. And Lord, we confess that We are often not. And so we pray, Lord, that you would forgive us, Lord, cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And Lord, help us, strengthen us by your Spirit so that we would indeed be honest and dependable and loyal, that we would be faithful and that our faithfulness would be a sweet-smelling offering to you as we give thanks to you. In Jesus' name, amen.